I have been given the privilege to come aboard a UNDP supervised mission to the Western Forest Complex Wildlife Sanctuary, authorizing me to dwell into the jungle that very few people get to see. Given that no tourists or other civilians are allowed to enter this intact forest, it was gorged with wildlife. Given that I'm such an entomology nerd, I just couldn't resist filming some of it for you. Come along as I not only showcase these evolutionary masterpieces, but also what a UNDP field mission could look like. We left Bangkok at sunrise. Two buses carried our assembled group into the faraway jungle. The group consisted of remarkable people such as the National Biofinance Coordinator, researchers and blah 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 that were supposed to apply their knowledge of biofinance to improve the financial situation of the sanctuary in order to preserve the biodiversity within. And as the terrain around us became more and more lush, I started to wonder about today's first task, to interrogate and examine the conditions of the park's park rangers. As we arrived, I got to realize what heroes these individuals were, the park rangers, these women and men that lived under poor conditions while daily risking their lives by patrolling this vast territory full of dangers. With limited resources, these rangers received only a very modest payment while they had to deal with the fierce threats from not only the ferocious, poisonous and untamed wildlife, but also resisting poachers that were often armed with deadly weapons. Truly inspiring individuals that deserve all respect they can get. It was my honor to meet them. And the UNDP? made sure to listen to what they had to say in order to improve their standards and hence the protection of the sanctuary and the animals within. But this was only the beginning because next we were taking a big bite concerning the tiger conservation. We met the head staff and the animals of matter as well. These majestic mammalians were breathtaking to interact with on such close separation. These tigers were either taken back from illegal wildlife trade or rescued from fatal conditions in nature. It was a great project and indeed the tiger conservation was one of the most well-funded projects in this park. But why tigers? Aren't all animals equally valorized? As a matter of fact it might be true, but not in this park. Listen up, this is about to get interesting. Tigers are not only a flagship species, meaning that they are used as an influential figure of wildlife preservation, but they are also an umbrella species, meaning that they are more sensitive to changes within their ecosystem than other species. So, if we manage to keep their population healthy, the state of the ecosystem stays coherent. Amazing strategy, isn't it? However, there is one more species category that I think is paramount for conservation strategies. A keystone species. And I found exactly one in this part that I think we all love on this channel. The infamous... Army Ants. These ants are either seen or felt in all parts of the jungle. They form extensive foraging trails that spread all over the forest floor. They are also unique in so many aspects. In example, they have the most dramatic polymorphism in the entire ant kingdom, with enormous supermajor ants, with huge forceful mandibles that can crush the hardest of grains, to the minuscule workers that, as the significant majority of the colony, swarm whatever comes into their reach. One colony consists of millions of workers, and if you visualize the entire colony as a single organism, it could arguably be the most formidable predator out there in the jungle.
Oh, whoops, keystone species, I said. Yes, believe it or not, but there's a multiplex of species in this forest that directly depend on the army ants' existence in this jungle. Being almost an innumerable force, many predators rely on an individual army ant snack time after time, like this gorgeous crab spider that, if lucky, manages to snatch an ant. Cooler even was this guy called an assassin bug. Let's have a closer look, shall we? Do you see the weird protruding part on its abdomen? That is a dead ant. This assassin bug has sticked upon himself one of his latest meals in order to blend in smell-wise around the ant colony, in order to snatch an ant whenever the hungers call him. Amazing, isn't it? Another animal has even been named after its prey, the ant lion. This is a moth larvae that creates peculiar cone-shaped holes. They look like this, but they are normally never seen because they are embedded under the sand at the bottom of their creative creations, waiting for their prey to wander into it. I managed to catch two of such occasions. As you can see, the ant simply can't climb back up the slippery contouring walls, making it slide straight into the lion's jaw that viciously drags the helpless ant down the undergrowth. Even stranger than that was my encounter with a blind snake that, believe it or not, only feeds on termite and ant eggs. It is often mistaken for a worm or a baby snake, but it is completely harmless. And I personally find them very cute. All these astounding animals would suffer greatly if the army ants disappeared. That would be disastrous, and there is so much more. The greatest contribution from the army ants is perhaps their great nuptial flight. As most of you know, an ant colony consists of workers and a queen. The queen is often the largest and also the mother of all ants in the colony, being the only individual that can lay eggs. She's vital for the colony's survival. You can even catch one and raise an ant colony on your own with a single queen. But in order to found a new colony, the virgin queens with wings born from existing colonies all around fly out from their nests and mate in the sky. There is much more complexity involved that I would love to discuss with you guys in example what happens to the males, but we unfortunately don't have the time. But here is a brief explanation of the three fundamental steps of the colony founding process of an ant colony. Nevertheless, being such a massive colony, the army ants produce thousands of flying ants. More even, the queens are huge and full of fat, which is a must in order to create such a massive empire later on their own. That said, the jungle feasts during this event as predators, small or big, gourmandize on all flying ants they can get. Birds, bats, fish, spiders and even ants just collect this abundance of gifts from heaven. This contribution feeds a great deal of the entire jungle and arguably prospers biodiversity as such a wide range of animals are being fed to. Whenever I walk into a jungle, I always look for a certain species of ant that for me indicates something about the habitat, but also the health of the ecosystem. Army ants is such a species that reflects abundance and hence biodiversity in the jungles of Southeast Asia. Another indicator species is, for example, the dinosaur ants, which presence tells me a lot about the surrounding ecosystem and habitat. 
It is fascinating how we sometimes only need to see a single individual or species to tell the conditions and biodiversity around us. Biodiversity. That is a word, hopefully, you may hear often. Maybe also you hear often about the importance of biodiversity. But why is it important and why do we invest money in preserving biodiversity when we can spend it on more direct and important matters such as healthcare or schools? Well, we need biodiversity, maybe even more in the future and probably more than you know. And the concept of biofinance is not only about protecting biodiversity for future generations but also gain money from it in a sustainable way. Personally, I find it obvious that we invest for sustainable solutions and also incomes that biodiversity can provide. Take ecotourism as an example. This trip reminded me not only about how we can obtain money from nature in sustainable ways, but also how everything within is interwebbed in unimaginable connections and that we can protect this complexity by simply focusing on the well-being of well-chosen species. We all know the price of nature, but the value, ladies and gentlemen, is something of a greater magnitude. Thank you once again, ladies and gentlemen, and I will see you in a brand new Vivarium update, coming up soon. I know you guys have waited for this. See you all soon.